and good morning everyone. Welcome back. Good Friday morning to you. Hope you're enjoying a great cup of coffee this morning. Uh, this is my second or third. Uh, here it is pretty early as I'm filming this. But anyway, it's great to be back with you and I'm continuing to share some thoughts with you on Satan and the victory of Christ. And I've shared with you a vital and an absolutely critical issue that is sometimes overlooked in the discussions. And that issue is the absolute one-to-one -one relationship between the presence, the establishment of the kingdom, and the destruction of Satan. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, 28. If I by the finger of God do cast out demons, then surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And so as we develop the New Testament, and even as we go to the Old Testament, what we find is at the end of the millennium period, and the millennium period is the period of time uh, in which Christ would be at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning until his enemies would be put under his feet. Psalms 110. So the millennium is the interim, if you please, the interim period of time between the initial victory of Christ and the final victory of Christ over the devil, at which time Satan is destroyed, i.e. at the end of the millennium, at what is known as the great white throne judgment. Now, that final judgment of Satan is the new creation, or brings in the new creation, the new heaven and the new earth. It is what brings in that which is perfect. That is, destruction of Satan brings in the new creation. Well, I'm sure you know in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul predicted the arrival of that which is perfect. Now, a lot of people try to make that simply the canon of the New Testament. Uh, generally speaking, down through the ages, it has been understood that that which is perfect is in fact the state or the condition that would arrive at the parousia. Now, there are certainly those who have disagreed with that, but there's really no good reason to deny that. There's no exegetical reason to deny that. But I simply want to lay before you this morning that Paul definitely predicted the end of the charismata the arrival of that which is perfect. Notice what Paul says. Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Now let's make a couple of real quick points here. When Paul says prophecy will fail, he's not saying that prophecies that had predicted certain events, those events will fail to take place. No, he is saying what Daniel 9 said, said, 70 weeks are determined to seal up vision and prophecy. In other words, the prophetic office, the charismatic prophetic office will cease. Notice he does something else. And by the way, the word that he uses there is katargeo. Now, katargeo can mean one of two different things. To nullify the effect, to nullify and to break the power, or simply to cease to function or to cease to exist. Okay? Well, that which is perfect was not going to nullify the power or the effect of prophecy and bring it to no effect. No, the fulfillment of prophecy would bring in the glory of Christ, i.e. the kingdom. So that's not what it means. So that leaves us with the idea that the prophetic office would cease to function, just like Zechariah 13, verse 2. I will cause the evil spirit and the prophet to pass out of the land. But notice he also says, <laughs> Pardon me. Where there be tongues, they shall cease. He uses the Greek word here, paomai, 
which is in the middle voice. And what that kind of means is they would cause themselves to cease. In other words, they would fulfill their function. And when their function was fulfilled, they would cease. Then, he, then of course, he says, where there, be sh where there shall be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Well, once again, he's not saying that any and all knowledge, you know, I, I know that I own a Mustang. He's not talking about the time in which I would no longer know that I had a Mustang, okay? This is the inspired, miraculous, infallible word of wisdom, word of knowledge. It's inspiration, in other words. He uses, once again, the Greek word katargeo. So there's no question whatsoever that Paul is saying here what Daniel said, what Zechariah said. And that is, the time was coming in which the prophetic office, now remember, the prophetic office and the evil spirit, the function of the evil spirit, are synchronous events. So by saying that the prophetic office inspired infallible knowledge and tongues would cease, Paul was thereby predicting the end of the charismata. He was predicting the destruction of Satan. When would that be? When that which is perfect has come. Now all we've done, pardon me, all we've done today is to set the stage. We obviously have to talk about that which is perfect. And so that's what we'll do on our next segment. That's, that's what you call a teaser. <laughs> By the way, you will see my development of some of this in my two books, 70 Weeks Are Determined for the Resurrection. Remember, the resurrection is the time of the fulfillment of all prophecy, the cessation of the prophetic office. And seal up vision and prophecy. 70 weeks are determined to seal up vision and prophecy to bring the prophetic office to its close. Go to my websites, www.eschatology.org, www.bibleprophecy.com, order the books, mention that you saw the offer on YouTube, and I'll refund your shipping. Thanks so much to you who have taken advantage of this special offer. Hey, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful weekend. I've got some great things planned. I hope, hope to get an old 70 model Monte Carlo running. Brand new motor, transmission, blah, blah, blah. Hope to get it running this weekend. Don't know if I can or not. I'll keep you posted. Thanks again for joining me. You have a great weekend.